Hello, hello, and welcome to number two of my YouTube series, Tilted Chess. And boy, do I have a juicy tilted game today. You can tell from the timers that you see on the screen that you can already see that there was, a, there was definitely a, a battlefield taking place on this particular online chess board. And I definitely want to post this game. I'm actually streaming live right now. I actually have a couple of viewers that are watching. Uh, looks like it's six or seven here. I'll even flash them here. See, shout out to all of you that are, are watching right now. If there is, I know there's like at least six or seven of you, so feel free to post at any time, and I'll I'll flash it over as we continue on. But yeah, so I decided to play. A, see, I'm looking at the screen. We have seven people. I'm slowly becoming famous. Maybe taking over the world one day, but we gotta go baby steps. <laughs> So yeah, my name is Vijir, and welcome to my second video. And I decided to play a tournament today, and I didn't feel like recording a tournament. I just kind of wanted to relax and, and play some chess. And I wanted to try streaming a little bit, just for the fun. Um, I haven't, I've never really streamed seriously before, and I don't know how to set it up. So it's not, I'm not really a technical noob. I can figure it out. It's just that I really don't know what to do yet. So I'm just kind of playing games randomly and seeing if my computer can handle it. But this time I decided to play a tournament, and it was a 10 minute, uh, no increment, classical rated tournament, two hours long. And my first opponent was a 2400. Now, I've mentioned that in real life, I'm rated around, I would say, 2050, maybe 2100. But I would, I would definitely say I'm around between 2000, like 2020, 2030, 2040 right now. And if I get back competitive, maybe I can get to uh, 2100 officially. In, in the future. So suffice to say, I don't fight against 2400 as well. Um, they definitely have way more knowledge than I do. They have much more experience. And in certain ways, they might be even conditionally better to play the game. So I want to talk about this game in particular because there was definitely a lot of psychological thought going to my head. Even though... I've learned how to control those thoughts even at the highest stakes. Like, I'm a poker player too, so I learned how to control my emotions even when the stakes are extremely high and real life money is on the board. And I, I, I turn out really well emotionally. Chess, too, is, is still really tough. And I want to show a game where I was playing really well and it got to the point where my mind took, oh, well, my mind mixed a little bit with my thoughts. And when that happens, best results don't necessarily happen. That's kind of like the best way to say it. Uh, I just want to get the window open. Yeah, I know. We got seven people. I'm just looking at the chat right now. Hold on. Let's put it correct. Here we go. Let's see? Someone just said seven. Yep, that's true. I got seven. Pretty shocking. Okay, so let's start the game. I started off with E4, so I mean C4. So usually when I play tournaments and I play games that I really want to win, I'll play my most common opening that I know very well. So I, I always play English. If I ever play Sicilian White, I, it means that I'm not... Like, I know it well, but I, I'm not confident enough. Well, I'm not saying I'm confident enough. It's just I don't prefer to play that compared to C4 where I, can, I have more knowledge on. So we start off with C4. Uh, opponents start with c6, so I'm already thinking possible semi slap, etc. But I know d5 is coming right away. Knight c3, d5, and I take the pawn. I decided I want to take it because I don't want to go into. I wanted to keep it simple for me to understand because I know it's a 10 minute game, and although I'm not scared of of the person's reign or who I'm playing against, I'm also want to factor that I want to give myself the best options to playing the best move and that's playing something simple that I don't want to I, I have some knowledge in so I can come up with the correct move at any time so I play d4 followed by knight c6 knight f3 uh, knight f6 so again this is four knights right in the center and bishop g5 again very standard move 
And I remember at this point, I was thinking, what if the person plays knight e4? What am I supposed to do? And then, of course, being a strong regular player, they play. They usually play the most, the, the most pro, uh, prolific uh, move to start generating possibilities. Now, immediately, I was thinking of playing knight f4, etc. But then there's all these tactics with the queen coming straight to a5, and then there's a lot of issues here. And there's also tactics of the knight going to a5. If I ever play a3, and then jumping ship on c c4 etc so there's a lot of those things i was trying to factor in the way i looked at it i think it's better just to play it simple and making sure that all, all pieces are protected so i went with knight d uh, bishop d2 there was a trade and now f5 so now i was thinking okay there's a lot of there's definitely b4 and I can't play a3 because then they go to knight a5. And then they thread in a, a fork. So I played the immediate knight h4. Which, in my opinion, I felt that was the only move I had to do in order to try and brush away this bishop. Black played knight g4. Or knight b... Uh, <laughs> bishop to g4. And I played h3. So I'm trying to kick it away. And then we got knight h5. So now, I looked at this, I said, okay, so temporary, the threat is over of, of the knight trying to travel onto my queen side. So now let's p protect my e3 pawn. And I want to protect it because there's also possible cases of e5 with uh, queen threatening to my h4 knight. So I played e3, and black played e6. So again, not playing aggressive, just playing... Uh, very solid, and decided to bring my knight back. Bishop takes, captured with uh, the pawn. Um, I'm not sure if I would have done this personally, because you got your bishop out, and you have the... Like, the way I look at it is that you have the two black bishops, so why would you do it? You And, you, and your bishop's out of the chain. If your bishop was stuck in here... Uh, in, in around this area, then, yeah, I can see yourself training your bishop because you have your black chain. But if you just even move your bishop back or or just keep it alive or even just leave it here because playing g4 is not really on my to-do list, you can then exurbit, ex, uh, exhume your, your bishop and, and at least cover some squares. So it, it just didn't make sense to me off the top of my head. And honestly, I don't mind trading because... Do I have to castle? No. I, if they castle, I could just stack my rooks and then put my bishop on d3. And you're going to see that later on, um, that it starts to bite the my opponent, that move. So queen h4. Uh, honestly, this is a pretty aggressive move, but there's not much extra going on. They're just setting up the castle on the queen side. And when I saw this move, I really thought nothing of it. There was really nothing that I see that I was really concerned with. So now I finally play a3 uh, with my goal playing pawn to b4. I want to start expanding on the queen side now. And black plays d6. Again, uh, just developing. And I just follow through with my b5. Um, I was looking at a5s I wasn't really that concerned with in my mind because I can just lock up the, the queen side, and then I can play moves like bishop d3, king e2, and then start stacking my rooks up on the enemy's king side. Black castles, and I play d3. So again, now I'm developing, and I'm looking to play king e2. Rook goes rook a to c8, which I understand. It's a, it's a lane where you definitely want to put a rook on. However... What's starting to happen is that I, at this point in time, I decide that my plan is going to be to go after the king. And I know I can do that, go after it because I have this nice G file that I can put my rooks in. And I have a bishop that's already aiming on the h7 square. And the black knight's not really doing anything right now. There is no attacking of my queen side as of yet. And I still can't push my e4 pawn because of this square right here. So I go king e2. And now they play e5. So this is where 
I was trying to figure out what I want to do. And obviously, if I switch to analysis board, we could see the correct move, what's going on. But that's not the purpose of this video. My purpose of this video is tilting chess, not necessarily what was the best move in every type of game chess, which I can definitely do, but I kind of, my video has a purpose, and I wanted to really explain that purpose by my thought process of how I played this chess game. If this was me recording, or me talking about, say, two grandmasters at the, the recent tournament that, the, that just took place right now, yeah, then I would definitely go through different openings and different moves, and what are the possibilities, and what was the best one, etc. But that's, mm, again, not my purpose here. So what I was thinking, I remember at this time, was that, okay, so now it's starting to get very complicated. Uh, this square, F4, is very important for me to maintain protection of, because as soon as the black bishop comes on F4, in any way, it starts to become very troublesome for white, because the white is definitely in the middle. And even though, man, that white king looks very cozy right now, there's definitely possibilities that could take place. At the same time, I have to maintain that I can't open either E or D lane up because if all, either of those open, these rooks start raining down. And that's another possibility too. So I noticed that I can move my bishop to F5, just a temporary threat in a rook, but basically give my queen more power to focus on this particular, this, this particular area. So I'm giving myself more chances. And I remember my timer was kind of down here. I was down two minutes. I think uh, uh, Tiss was like around 5.30 and I was like 3.30. But that's how I was thinking. So I go with bishop f5. And I play rook c d8. So I knew this was going to happen. So now the move I looked at is I realized that if I play knight d5, I can follow it up with e4, and not only kind of solidify the center a little bit, but I maintain the protection of the knight f4 square, or the f4 square with my knight on d5. So this is where I started coming up with an advantage. Now, I don't know necessarily, I'm not sure if they missed the move, but it definitely came out well ahead for me. So I played knight d5, and Hmm. Yeah, there was a lot of things I could have done. I definitely didn't want to play EX, DXE because then it would have caused a lot of issues with this rook on the D file. So I thought this was best move for me at this time. They took the pawn, and then I played E4. And I think this is where I'm starting to feel a tiny bit comfortable. Um, I was also hoping that my opponent would play G6 to try and knock away the bishop because then my follow through would have been at to rook to G1. Now, what I noticed too is that I was able to play my rook, as you'll see, after these two moves, to g1 because my queen side was not really being effective. Uh, uh, Tiss didn't really attack my queen side. They were kind of just like playing moves and focusing on the center. And I guess that kind of works out. But I feel as though like if your opponent is playing one side of the board in particular, you have three options. You can defend your side, you can strike in the middle, or you can strike on the opposite side. Uh, the fact that I didn't have that many pieces on the queen side at that time makes me think that you can probably strike through the queen side and be a little bit more efficient because you have the dark bishop that I can't play against because they're the king of all the dark squares. So none of since these pawns are not moving at all, it, did, it was kind of like there was no counterplay or no opportunity for attack on the queen side so it allowed me to go on the offensive and that's exactly what I wanted to do in this tournament because I knew I was playing a stronger player and I wanted to make sure that I didn't want uh, my opponent to become aggressive because if it, is, if it does then I have to defend and if I don't defend perfectly I'm going to lose while if I attack if they defend perfectly then it still gives me a better chance of surviving the game rather than then try and play for a draw and lose to someone that's more experienced and and more tactical knowledge. All right, I want to check to see if my streammates are falling asleep. Uh, okay, I'm just reading some comments here real quick. Oh, I have 11 people? 
Oh, I got nine. That's not bad. You guys lied to me. No, I'm kidding. You guys didn't lie. Uh, how do I get... I always keep moving my screen, so I keep missing the the chat box of, of Twitch. There we go. So let's do this. Go here. Yeah, I know. My video is... This, this, this is not going to be a clean video compared to all my other videos which are clean, but it's fine. Uh, since you're someone who plays Mania 4, would you explain the reasoning behind changing up your first move for this game? And I think the point is that you don't play safe castling side of Fury King and the Queens are still on the board. It was 11. Oh, it was 11. Nice. Okay, so to answer Fate's question, um, I play C4 because since you're someone who mains E4, would you explain the reason behind changing up? I play sword because I'm more comfortable that my opponents don't know how to play C4 as well in terms of exploiting compared to E4. So for example, um, there's a lot of openings that black can play that I'm very familiar with from white if I play C4. So for example, they can play King's Indian Defense, which... I know how to play from white's point of view. They can play queens. Uh, they can play like they can play d5, and I know what to do. They can play slav, and I have an understanding, at least with c4 played. They can play banco, and I know how to play against that. So I'm really banking on their side of knowledge rather than my knowledge because I'm someone who played chess for 25 years but haven't for the last 10 years really got into the game like you folks are doing studying openings gaining insight Well, yeah, you're right, but I'm just saying that if I play d4, there won't be someone playing banco. Um, if they play c4 and then they switch to a banco, I know how to play that for coming from c4 and yes, transitioning to d4. Although I usually don't play d4, I just play c4. And if it opens to a d4 line, like how this happened, then I I know how to play the basic lines, at least at, at the level of play I am right now. Obviously, if I know an opening well then i can take advantage of my opening knowledge by doing something that my opponent might can't really respond well to well i like typing because i can type i type at 120 words a minute so i can definitely talk and type in really fast um now if i play e4 for white so right now for e4, the openings I know I can play Rui Lopez. I can play uh, I can play I can play different openings of Rui Lopez, but I don't know it that well. I can definitely play Sicilian uh, Nadoff. I can play King. I can play uh, Dragon from White side point of view. I can play um, the Bind, which is c4, which um, I play, I'm starting to get used to more. I can also play Perk uh, if my opponent initiates Perk. I can do that too. But it's still like I'm because the common moves against c5 or i mean against e4 or sicilian i don't know all the openings for sicilian and i just don't want to go into a, an opening repertoire where many of my opponents play all the time and i don't play enough of just because i haven't studied enough of it yet when i was younger i used to study a lot of openings so my opening knowledge was actually probably my stronger and back in those days where my middle game was weakened and my end game's my best now i feel like it's the opposite i feel like my openings are my weakest my middle game is good a little it's better than before and my end game i still think it's really solid as long as i'm you know con concentrate on not tilting hey vajir hi everyone i am going to play play blitz later but i'm actually recording my next youtube video Say hi to YouTube. <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm actually doing a YouTube video on tilting 
for my tilting series, which I'm actually talking about right now. I just want to kind of involve you folks in because it's kind of fun. I never had anyone watch me live commentating and, and talk about the purpose of a of a chess game that I'm analyzing, which is one of my own. I just happened a couple hours ago. Yeah, but fate. The thing is that even when you main e4, you should have an idea of how to play against openings that your opponent might have. Again, it depends on what your level is, right? I think that's the biggest thing. Definitely in the tournament, I need to have a wide range of openings. And my openings in white is not as strong as my openings in black, which I, I know at least six good openings in black that I can pull out of my butt crack and, and I can, I'll be fine in. Uh... Against for, I watched your first video. Oh, that's awesome! Actually, hold on, let me read your stuff earlier. Are you the guy who started a new YouTube and posted on that? Well, how do you click on this? Okay, there, I'll just put. That is me. Should I post on Reddit that I'm streaming? Am I allowed to do that? I just trying to try and attract more of an audience, so I'm trying to do it in different ways like personal talking on, on streaming, etc. But okay, let me get back to this analysis, which is important for me. So bye folks. Okay, so last I left off. Hold on. Okay, that's better. Okay, so last I left off here was I was talking about how because there was no push for counterattack on the black's queen side and they were pushing for the center but it wasn't going as planned um, now i'm starting to build up and obviously this g6 pawn that was definitely a mistake because now my plan now is to go after the queen so king goes out of the way and now i play rook to g4 and this is very good for me obviously uh I limit to one spot, so the queen goes to f. I mean to h5, and now I play my knight, and this is where, and this this is the part of the game where I knew that my gut was telling me like I'm gonna win, or my gut wasn't telling me that, but I had a feeling like all right, game's over, let's go on, but now this is where the tilt happened. And this is where uh, everything didn't go well for me. Even though you're looking at this right now and you're thinking, oh. This is your first game, you're playing a 2409, you're winning, your timer's getting low, their timer's low too, but you're winning. And it looks like it's going to be a slam dunk. Well, it should have been a slam dunk, but here are some of the factors that was still going through my head. As much as I was trying to be disciplined while playing, and I successfully played an opening and a middle game where I actually came out with a huge, ridiculous lead to the point where I was actually going to win... Uh, I was still thinking in the back of my mind, oh damn, I'm playing a 2400 player, anything could happen. And it was that slight doubt and the slight awareness of that my opponent could still come back somehow is what got, is the first thing that happened to me. The second part is that I kind of rushed in a way. And I should never have rushed. I should have even used my, like my last minute 30 seconds to find a mate, and then just blitz it out in the end and win it. And that's what I should have done. And But I didn't do that, and as a result, I made a blunder later on, and then you're going to see how the game transformed. So, this is the pawn where... this See, this is where I have to appreciate my opponent, because they didn't give up. They knew that they were losing. They knew that it was going to be over, but they didn't give up. They just kept going. And they created a chance for them by hoping that I would screw up. And that's what happened. I did screw up. And therefore, uh, they came back. Well, it wasn't that even that fact they came back. It was they, they managed to almost equalize. I was still winning, but then I made one fatal mistake because of tilt, and then it just became over. So I moved my king over, um, which later on, now that I think about it, maybe it was better to move it to f1 instead, because worst case scenario, I could just sneak into g2, and then I'd be fine. But I figured I'd just played on a D. I wasn't really thinking that much of it. So pawn took the bishop. I took the queen. Rook was taken. And now I played queen to h6. 
and I'm thinking to myself, okay, this game is over. And now Black played e5. So now my favorite Twitch viewers you're going to watch this and Well, I'm going to reply to you guys in a second, but I want to give you guys a chance. Look at the stream right now and tell me where the win is. So, actually, I'm going to block the screen here. Right here. So, analyze. I'll give you guys like two minutes and you can tell me how do, how do I win. Because there's a win for sure. This is your tactics live trainer, literally, right now. In the meantime, I'm going to start typing. I'm going to shut up and I'm going to start answer, replying to some questions here. Oh, that is true. Okay, so... I'm starting to see a definitely correct line of thinking. Oh yeah, queen f6. Definitely not. Uh, but yes, I was. Okay, now we're starting to see the variations. Here we go. Okay, queen f4, followed by e5, move bishop back, h4, f5, knight f6, and you can either melee or silver seven. So you're telling me h4, f5, knight f6, or rook h7, queen h7, queen h7, g8 is covered. I think bishop f8. Oh, well, let me get the let me get the full view so everyone can see. I think knight f6 first. To stop rook to g8 to g7, okay. Or knight f6 first and on bishop f6 instead of queen 6 and h4, which forces made down the h file. Ah, there we go. Okay, so I think every, everyone started figuring it out. So, bye bye, everyone. See you guys later. Okay, so getting back to the game. This is actually uh, a maiden 4 immediate. Uh, there's no way black gets out of this. And it's correct. You go knight f6. So threatening the mate on queen h7, black takes, and then you go h4, and there's no way to get out of it, because then bishop has to block, rook takes, and black can do any move, like whatever, and doesn't matter, because then queen takes on h7, and the game's over. And I had, at that time, a minute and 30 seconds to at least look for the mate, because obviously that's why I'm doing this. Uh, not only am I going after the queen, but the goal is to win the game, right? But I didn't. I missed it. And I know the reason why I missed it is not because I don't have the ability to notice this. Believe me, this is actually really easy. And I, I really do promise you uh, that if I was in a tournament and I had a lot of time, I would have found this mate in, in the, like within half a second. The reason why I, I missed it is because I wasn't looking for it. And that's the problem. Um, I didn't look for it, and I had a lot of time pressure on me because there was the pressure of playing against someone very highly rated, highly rated against me, and coming up to a good spot. It's kind of like I self sabotage myself, which is kind of like another way of tilting. 
actually, you know, it is true. Tilting is self-sabotage. So I self-sabotage myself, and as a result, I missed the mate, and then everything just went downhill from here. It was really sad. Uh, I'm just reading what you guys are talking about right now. How come you guys can't hear me? What the heck? I, I This is the same setting I use all the time. You should be able to hear me. Okay. Anyways. So what happened was that I played F4, which... <laughs> okay, I screwed up, but my goal was to block off the bishop. So I play F4. They play the rook. And now, even in this spot, I still could have won. But... Well, no, I couldn't have won. I actually, uh, like, I would still have came out really well in this event. I still would have, I still would have definitely won the game, even if I couldn't mate my opponent. But for some odd reason, I just play hxg4, and that immediately makes me lose the queen to this. So already, at this point, this is where I would say phase two of the tilting happened. Now, if you look at the field, yeah, I'm going to lose my my rook, I'm going to lose my queen, but I'm going to get a rook and a bishop in return. I'm still not that bad off in some ways. I'm, I'm really not. So, why did I play this move? Oh, because I wanted to get my rook active. Okay. See, that was weird. Like, I could have just take, 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 and then take with my rook, and eh, I don't know. Let's look a look. Take, I take... Take, 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 or take, take, take. Yeah, it's still, it wasn't going to be pleasant. So I played knight to f6, followed by exchange. So now you look at the spot, and opponent has five pawns. I have six with a queen side, uh, king side majority, and their pawn is all the way down to, to uh, b3. And already this is looking... Like, this is not going to be fun. And right now, we're rushing down on time. Um, I still had, like, a 30-second lead on my opponent. Like, I, I still had a 30 seconds. So, from a blitz point perspective, I wasn't going to lose fast. In fact, I might even be able to still defend this properly. Uh, so, I was definitely going to be like, okay, I gave, I screwed up, but I can win the game still if I, if I push my opponent. And I was winning. Like, I had 30 seconds over him. It was like... Uh, it was like his 18 to like my 47. So I play rook f5. He plays knight to d4, which I expected. I play rook to c5. Plays rook there. I play my rook on an active lane, b5. And this is where everything went shatters. Yep. I made that move. And I'm just going to flash it over to Twitch for a second. And you can tell me really quickly, what's the winning move for black? <laughs> Let's see who gets it first. What's the winning move for black? Winner! <laughs> All right. Oh, wait, I got 19 people? What? You guys are lying. Hold on. Let me get back here. Oh, I got 22 people. Look, there's actually 22 people watching me. Hi, everyone. You're in the middle of a live recording of my next YouTube video, which I'm going to actually post here real quick. It's part of the Tilting Chess uh, series, which I'm making right now. Oh, this is awesome. Well, you guys get to come in and watch me analyze a game where I literally just lose. <laughs> But I'll explain why I lost. So yes, the winning move from black was knight c8. And I had 40 seconds on my clock. And I let it all drain. Because I knew I lost. And I just sat there. And this was on Twitch. Everyone was watching. I had like four people watching me while I was playing this. and the, Including a guy that added me on my friends list. And they were watching me. And I just went. Like I just. I was so sad. And then this guy um, posted on Twitch. And he goes. Hey, at least you weren't recording it. And I'm like, you think that's going to make me feel better? That I didn't record it and I lost? That's the least of my worries. I lost a game that was won, that I actually outplayed and, and thought really well. And I was, I was very impressed with myself. But the problem is, is that it doesn't matter how impressed you 
you are and how well you do in the opening or how well you crush the middle game, if you don't win the game, it doesn't matter. And that's the cold hard truth of chess. And that's why chess is not necessarily just analyzing knowledge, understanding. There's just the mo there's the emotional side, there's the psychological side, there's the pressure side of how to play chess. And this was one example where I failed and it's cool because I'm gonna definitely learn from it. And there's a lot of techniques I said in my last videos on how to control your tilt. And trust me, I have to follow them too. And I do follow them good from time to time. This is one of the games where it's a rarity because I don't play people with that level of strength. Common. Like, I just don't. At least not yet. So to recap, this was a game where uh, I played an opening. Played very basic. Uh, got... A bit of presence out of the opening. Uh, they tried a tactic, or not a tactic, they tried positionally outplaying me, which came out the reverse. I was actually positioned outplaying them to the point where I got a, a favorable queen t uh, capture, and then it led to a maiden four that I completely missed. Not because of my ability to play chess, but because of the psychological aspect of everything else. And that's what hindered my, my ability, and therefore I tilted. So I really hope you enjoyed this uh, this analysis and this explaining of of tilt and what makes people tilt. And this was a I think this is a hopefully a good video that you guys can learn from because it's it talks about t the personal side of tilting. Uh, my last video I was talking more of a generic sense of how stronger or how you can improve as a better player, whether you're uh, 1200 or 1500 or 1600 player to someone getting into tournaments slowly to someone who's played chess like I have for a while, and of course. Um, a lot stronger, more competitive chess players out there than myself. We can all learn from how to control our emotions, especially when we encounter situations where it's not common. And that's the thing. Chess, it doesn't matter if you know it or don't know it. When it happens, you need to be ready. So if you're in a tournament and someone plays an opening you've never seen before, you have to be ready. If someone busts out the the pawn to f4 first move on a, in a like a like a money cash tournament you better know how to play against that bird opening if you're black or else you're gonna start going into a losing position and then you guess what you have two opponents you have to fight against you have to fight against your opponent and you have to fight against yourself think about that okay that's enough for this video uh i might you're gonna be seeing more few future videos for me obviously in chess I still have my Heart of Chess video coming up for number four, the difference between 1800 to 2100. I'm actually going to analyze some Grandmaster games for it because I want to talk about examples. I want to I have a good game that I remember that I'm going to take an example from that game and show you what's the difference between 18 and 21. And there is a there is a significant difference in 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 that strength of play, especially at the classical like normal length normal regular time like one hour 30 minute games huge difference in, in level of strength I definitely want to emphasize on that I'm gonna definitely do another tilting video um, I was playing one of my viewers that was here earlier I'm gonna let me get back to them if they're still on right now uh, where's my twitch chat I think they're still here I was playing against Camel Clutcher and they played a very odd opening against me, which I was coming out a little worse, but I was starting to find room for counterattack. And then they played a move where I tilted, didn't analyze it properly. Yep, see, he's here. So he already knows what I'm talking about, or she. I don't know if it's he or she. But I played a move that I just tilted when I saw them play it. And if I just thought about it for like a good minute and looked at everything, I really realized they were completely losing. But I tilted, and therefore I lost. So that's another game I want to... I kind of want to play too because that's another psychological aspect of tilting that again completely prevented me from actually winning like without even like without even hesitating so that stuff is really important so thanks to uh, Camel Clutcher for wanting to play me in chess uh, thank you for everyone thank you for all you viewers that were watching me hearts to all of you You've made my night. I'm very happy to have 
happy to have a live audience listen to this. Listen to me, a nobody, in this community. Uh, stream's not ending, video is ending. So I'll, I'm going to continue streaming, but I'm going to end this video because the main purpose of this video for ended. But I want to shout out to all you guys. Oh, look, Kappa Pride. <laughs> you have to keep going now? What do you mean I have to keep going now? Oh, as in I got to keep playing? Yeah, maybe. Okay, so bye, folks. Everyone say bye to YouTube. So start waving real quick before I end it. I don't have a delay on the stream, so they should be responding. If not, I'll just end it. Hyper bullet or riot? I am slow in hyper bullet, but I'll accept challenge. All right, bye everyone. So I hope everyone enjoyed that video, and I will see you all tomorrow. Take care, everyone.